Hello, everyone, and welcome to the very first episode of Chasing Kojima. My name is Will Crosby. Joining me is Zach Schneider from Save Data. How you doing? What? Oh, sorry, no, I was just getting... I guess you could say I kept you waiting, huh? God, that was the worst joke. That was not rehearsed. I genuinely thought you (laughs) You couldn't hear me for a second. You had no idea I was going to do that. (laughs) Um, oh, uh, that's the perfect way to start this. I made a sweet overlay that everyone else can see right now. That is the codec. So that'll be pretty great. Oh, that's fucking rad. Trapped in the codec. Um, so this was kind of, this is born out of our, uh, mutual love for Hideo Kojima games, uh, except for Death Stranding, which I, I enjoy. You enjoy less. um, Yeah. Is a known fact. The uh, midsection is incredible. Everything else I could take or leave. Yeah, I, I would probably agree with that. Um, uh, and then Ian Ian brought up an idea of just doing a show anytime there's Kojima news, and I thought that was funny. Um, some people have done that with other <laughs> things before. So anytime there's Hideo Kojima news that is somewhat breaking, not like he had a sandwich today, uh, we will try to make an episode <laughs> and put it up. Um yeah, so this is this is the start of that. I figured uh, we would kind of uh, slowly go into this. Most episodes will probably be like tackling the news, do some speculation and rumors and stuff. But I figured today we would start out with a little background about Kojima for people who don't know who he is. He's a Japanese game developer. Um, Zach, I wanted to ask you, do you know mm-hmm. the very first game he ever worked on? Officially. <sighs> I know you did something for police before police knots. Uh, that's what's coming into my head, though. Uh, I, I'm wrong. I don't know. What, what is it? So the very first game he ever worked on was one Penguin Adventure. For which, Penguin Adventure? <laughs> for the MSX, I believe. He was the assistant designer, and he added, like, it was a sequel to, I think it was Arctic Adventure. And he added, like, RPG elements and action sequences and stuff. I was watching some videos of it. I'll try to put them on screen. And it's kind of like a a front scroller, I guess you would call it, where you're, like, moving forward and jumping over things and shooting stuff. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at this now. Uh, You know what? Never thought. Never would have thought that this was the first game this man had worked on. (laughs) Yeah, it's pretty good. I was... I was... I, I think... I, I was thinking in some episodes we might play a game, excuse me, while talking, mm. uh, and I was like, oh, if we we fired this up, I think that'd have been pretty rad. Do a hundred percent speed run, it'd be great. Um, yeah, adventure. so that's kind of uh, where he got sunk his teeth in, I should say. Um, mm-hmm. Most people know him from the Metal Gear, Metal Gear series, uh, Zone of mm-hmm. Enders, Death Stranding, PT. Um, is there anything oh, else? Psychonauts. Not Psychonauts. <laughs> Police Knots. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a day could Psycho-mantis. use Psychonauts. Um, oh, there should be a Psychomantis in... Spinoff game? Oh, in Psychonauts. <laughs> in Psychonauts. That'd be a good, that'd be a good reference. Yeah, it'd be so, I feel like Tim Schafer would totally go for that joke. Just like suddenly have like one of the characters turn towards the camera and be like, you like to play Castlevania, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't know, I, looking at his Wikipedia page, he was a producer on Castlevania Lords of Shadow, which I oh. I played like the first two hours of before I stopped playing it. Yeah. Um, not, not out of... Uh, Castlevania. Yeah. It's not... It's pretty good as a 3D Castlevania. Um, mm-hmm. And then uh, I wanted to tackle my experience, and then we'll hit your experience with uh, Hideo Kojima Games. I never played them until I think I watched a little bit of the uh, Metal Gear Scanlan on uh, Giant Bomb. And Mm. so then I was like, oh, I want to play these games. So I played Metal Gear 1, 2, and then I went to Metal Gear Solid 1, 2. And then I didn't play 3 till a couple years later. Then slowly played 4, and then I played 5, I want to say 2 years ago. Mm. And that game's great uh and then uh and then death stranding as well i haven't played anything else uh i played every metal gear game except for the what is it survive 
which is the oh, multiplayer yeah. one. And then I've never played Revengeance either or any, ask, any of the handhelds. Uh, Revengeance? Surprisingly good. It's dumb, but it's surprisingly good. Yeah, it, it looks like a lot of like good. What, what is that genre? Hack and slash? Not hack and slash. Yeah, a character action game character is what I would call it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It, it looks like that kind of fun. I just I never was interested in it because it was like a side. It's not is it it's yeah. not official canon, right? It's like no, uh, it definitely does some it does some things that like I'm like, no, you can't make this canon for the sake of the series. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. So uh, what's your experience with the games? Uh, yeah, same, mostly same as you. I'm pretty much only familiar with the Metal Gear series, uh, and really mostly just solid at that. Um, I started with Metal Gear Solid 2, actually, oh, uh, really? when I was, I want to say like 14, 15, uh, a good friend of mine lent me his copy on the Xbox, actually, uh, cause that game came to Xbox, uh, and I played it there oh, and I was nice. like, wow, this is really fucking good. Um, just like e- even the tanker, I remember going through it and being like, you know, there's so many things in that area of the game that were so groundbreaking at the time. Mm-hmm. And even like five years after that, like so many games still weren't doing some of the things that that game had going for it. Like you, there, there was one like cup that had ice in it and you could specifically shoot like individual ice cubes yes. and have them break apart. Um, I remember so too, that, that same friend like made me, there's a room where you like walk over a, a, a walkway with like 300 soldiers and like one guy's giving them a speech and he was like, oh, no, shoot your gun or like throw a grenade. It'd be really funny. And I was like, OK, sure. And I did that. And all of a sudden, like 300, like the <laughs> uh, like the exclamation mark. And I was like, and then I had to go back like 15 minutes when oh. the last save was. And I was like, fuck you. <laughs> um, but MGS2, incredible game. Uh, actually, I think of all of the Metal Gear games, probably ages the best. Uh, which is kind of a controversial statement. People people tend to like three more than two. But I think two is actually better. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, but I don't know which I would say. Think about so I played two, then I was like, "Fuck, I'm all in. Let's go." Uh, I went. I actually, I, I've actually not played the original MGS one on the PlayStation. I've only played uh, the Twin Snakes, the remake oh, for the game. Really? Cube. Yeah, which people have mixed feelings on, and I totally understand why. Uh, it was very weird going back and playing it that way. And I definitely paid more money than I wanted to to play that. Uh, but then I went and got MGS3, played that. Uh, I didn't get to MGS4 until later because I didn't get a PlayStation 3 at launch. Mm. Um, and then MGS5 or MGSV, which is, I think, is so good. Um, people gripe about the story not being there, but God, that gameplay. Like, if you just gave me that gameplay, like, every year, like, it's just a new map. But just that gameplay loop, I would play it again and again it's and again. So it's I didn't as someone who came to it really late, I did not expect it to be that good because people mm. always talk it up like <clears throat> like some people say it's the best stealth game, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, I'll see about this. And it yeah, that loop is just so tight and good. And the it, it definitely wastes the player's time in some frustrating ways. I think going back to that, that would aggravate me, especially after playing Death Stranding, which really wastes the player's time in some frustrating ways. Yeah. Um, I imagine now if I had to get in and out of the helicopter three billion times, I would probably be unhappy. But I bet the loading everything times else about it. are better now. I'm sure the loading times are a lot better. Um, but yeah, that, that game is so good. Um, Someday we should talk about theories behind the whole, like, was it intentionally not finished? Yeah. I would love to hear your thoughts on that. But that's a whole, <laughs> a whole can, can of worms. worms. <laughs> we would talk for years about that. Oh, I want to do that. I was thinking of doing like some sort of, uh, I got to look up the anniversary. Like a topic I think for it's, each. I think it's September. We could do some sort of like breakdown. Of, yeah. Uh, everything. Oh, uh, I forgot that he did Boktai too. Yeah. Boktai is really good. I like that game a lot. I don't think I've, what is Boktai? So Boktai, the sun is in your hand is a Game Boy Advance game. And what made it special was that your character had like a gun and it was charged with actual solar power. So on the the cartridge is one of those like big cartridges that had like an extra dongle and it would actually like detect sunlight and your character's like gun thing would slowly fill up. So basically you you had, it was, it was Pokemon Go before Pokemon Go. You had to go outside and, uh, 
get that sun sunlight or else your character would be that, underprepared for fights. That's a genuinely pretty good idea to make. It's, people... I mean, for when did this come out? Uh, 2004? No, 2003. Uh, yeah, so it, it was cool. It was really cool. I like that. Um, that reminds me of, I think it was Kojima. Someone did an article, this was years and years ago, that he wanted to make a game that deleted itself if you died in the game mm. and then you'd have to buy another copy of it to play again. <laughs> oh, okay. No, you had me until that last one. I was like, oh, that's a bad idea, um, dog. <laughs> I was like, oh, I actually, it might not have been buy another copy. I think it was just completely start over, which is mm. like, I guess is somewhat roguelike, but I think I if you, as long as you didn't die, you could save. So you could be in a run as oh, long as okay, you want okay, okay, until okay. you died. But gotcha. once you died, um, Gotcha. You start over. Actually, it's it's funny. I'm doing the uh, doing the champions ballad in Breath of the Wild right now, and that is where you have like half a heart, and so anything yeah, yeah, kills yeah. you. And I already hate it so much. So the thought of that, because roguelikes <laughs> are different than the, the Zelda thing in this, but the thought of doing totally. that is is a nightmare. Um, mm -hmm. Sweet. So moving on, let's hit up the news. I don't have a news theme yet for this. Do you uh, want me to write a song right now and grab my guitar? <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> I still, uh, as an news, <laughs> news. We really should do that. That's actually pretty funny. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, that's not. If you want to do a clean take of that, you can do that. <laughs> I mean, I, we'll do it off screen. Okay. We don't have to do it now. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> God, what was I going to say? The, um, I that news theme for local chat as an aside, it I don't know how it recorded so perfectly because there's like it's like you recorded it in a studio because the second time you tried to do it, it like it like really Discord bad. garbled it and like That's did really the volume weird. noise suppression. And <laughs> I, I still don't know how that that one take the first time was so perfect. Oh, you know, you know, what we actually should do is still in a dream the news oh, i i searched metal gear on envato to see if they had any similar music i i, I ended up with this like 70s funk that was pretty good okay um, so we'll, we'll see how the how the listeners all two of them enjoy that <laughs> uh, okay so let's get into the actual meat of the news this week uh we're not going to cover mm -hmm. anything previous uh, thank God we didn't start this during the abandoned PS5 game. Oh debacle. my God. Um, that was a nightmare. Um, Poor but, Hassan, <laughs> whatever his name is. Yeah. But this is um, straight from the news as of yesterday, which was July 1st, 2021. Uh, this is from Jeff Grubb of Venture Beat, uh, Games Beat. Hideo Kojima's Love deal Jeff. with Xbox reaches a key milestone. So... This is a rumor, so uh, we tackle rumors on this show, but it seems reliable, as Jeff Grubb is a reliable person. Oh, yeah. Um, Hideo Kojima and Microsoft have signed a letter of intent that states that parties intend to work out the details on a publishing agreement for a new Xbox game, according to sources familiar with the matter. Now, before we continue, Zach, do you know what a letter of intent is? Uh, well, I intended to look that up before we started this stream, but no. So I also intended and succeeded. Uh, oh, Wikipedia yeah, article like, uh -oh. here <laughs> on the letter of intent. Uh, a letter of intent or LOI <clears throat> is a specific document under discussion that is outlining the understanding between two or more parties which understanding they intend to formalize a legally binding document. So this mm. document isn't in itself legally binding, except in certain situations where things aren't outlined. Uh, this Wikipedia article gets into very specific situations where they sometimes can be legally binding, but this is uh, just a document that probably has some NDAs in it, some uh, exclusivity stuff, and pretty much it's all good faith uh, again, there's not much information on exactly what this letter of intent is other than him working with Microsoft for an Xbox game. Mm -hmm. uh, but that is what a letter of intent is. Just wanted to solidify that before we move forward. Um, which so which I, I think, I mean, and, and maybe you feel differently, but this was pretty much, it had been rumored for a while, especially with, I want to say it was 
several months ago, um, Phil Spencer, head of Xbox, has yeah. done multiple things where like he's talking to a webcam in his home office and there's like a, a, a whole bunch of tchotchkes on a, on a thing behind him. And every time something new is there and then it's like next month you hear, oh, they just acquired Bethesda and like, oh, they just did. And it's like relating to what's about to happen. It's a fun little way to tease stuff. And a few months ago, they had a little logo or little uh, Luden. Uh, yeah, the 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 logo symbol mascot, whatever yeah. of uh, Kojima Productions, which everybody was like, oh, shit, Xbox has got Kojima. They're going to do a game. Um, and hey, they're going to do something. It's exciting. Um, so, yeah, this um, I'm kind of reading the Jeff Grubb article. Verbatim mm-hmm. here. I, I will link it in the uh, in the description here. Um, so he says this signifies both parties have agreed to a generalized deal while lawyers continue to hash out the finer points. So this is basically Microsoft and Kojima agreeing while the lawyers in the background figure out all the specifics. Um, mm-hmm. Again, he mentions they've spent months discussing this. We've heard this rumor a bunch. I mean, definitely ever since Phil Spencer threw up the little Luden guy next to the Xbox symbol. I think, I want to say that was game, was that Game Awards? Maybe it wasn't. Seems too... That seems too far. I, I feel yeah. like it was sometime in the, the like spring of this year, but it was like several months ago at this point. Yeah. Um, um, so as as far as the actual game, nobody knows what it is. Um, they last week, uh, Microsoft hired Portal and Left 4 Dead developer Kim Swift to oversee partnerships for cloud-based games. Uh, Chris, yes. if you're listening to this, cloud-based games are games that run off the cloud. Uh, he <laughs> asked that in the Discord. Um, mm-hmm. So basically, these are games that take advantage of cloud technology. Uh, as far as I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, that's like low latency. Uh, low mm-hmm. latency with other players, uh, faster load times, uh, all that sort of stuff that is native to the cloud. Since you're already up there and you're just viewing it, it can run off that hardware a heck of a lot more. I think that also means like you could run off multiple Xbox powers uh, and like yeah. really beef it up. So it's not something that would run on your home console. You would always be streaming it. Uh, right. Similar to... You can't run Resident Evil 7 on a Switch. You stream it to the Switch to play it. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so that's exciting. That's a lot of gameplay uh, opportunities that I don't even think anyone's fully thought about. And Kojima is definitely a person I think about who could come up with a game mechanic that would certainly take advantage of those faster load times, all that sort of stuff, um, mm-hmm. which is exciting. Uh, let me just, before we start more speculation... Uh, I think that's everything this article uh, this says the point of the partnership is to unlock the creativity of Kojima Productions using Microsoft's technology uh, as opposed to greenlighting a specific pitch. So they're kind of like, hey, we know you're going to okay. make a great game. So here's money. Go make a game versus bring us a game and then we'll tell you. if we want. Right. Right. Uh, Which I mean, I, I think Kojima is one of the few people that can get away with that uh, in the industry, mm-hmm. especially I mean pretty much immediately once he went solo after leaving Konami, uh, there was so much speculation of like, oh shit, who's going to get his next game? And then, yeah, it ended up being PlayStation. But you better fucking believe he was also on the phone with Phil Spencer being oh, like, yeah. come on, Kojima, <laughs> let's play ball. Jump in. Yeah, we um, got that Microsoft money. <laughs> I, I, I also don't know if this is 100% correct. I remember them saying the budget for uh, Death Stranding was it was either 150 million or 50 million. Like it was lower than a lot of people thought. So I wonder, and that was a lot of like, uh, the reason stuff was repeatable. It was also only an 80 man team, I believe. So I wonder if they'll be ramping up both production size and budget for any sort of Xbox game. Um, cause I feel like Microsoft, they're taking this risk on Kojima and they want the game to be amazing versus Sony, knew just the Kojima name would sell it. But now that Death Stranding's already come out and it wasn't that great of a game. um, I feel like... I mean, it certainly didn't set the world on fire. Yeah. Um, They need a win out of the gate. Yeah. I mean, it it definitely, it made its money back and... uh, Oh, certainly. 
Yeah, it, 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 it it's going to let them keep keep making more games. Obviously, I assume that that Xbox would like this next game to be better received than Death Stranding um, and definitely be a huge win for them. And, and kind of whatever cloud, uh, I mean, I guess X cloud, but like wh- whatever kind of sort of functions they're, they're hoping to kind of promote with this. Uh, but. <sighs> Yeah, it, it's it's exciting. I mean, obviously, you and I are, are are big fans of Kojima, and so it's kind of like, okay, this man could could sneeze, and we'll be like, okay, what's going on? What do you got for us? <laughs> what's in that? What's in that snot, Kojima? But um, what's in that I'm, snot? What's in that snot, Kojima? Um, <laughs> and, and yeah, it's it's like, hey, this is kind of a cool uh, Xbox is is aggressively courting like really cool 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 deals with uh different game studios and everything right now and i think this is definitely something they've wanted for a long time yeah it's also something we're not gonna see for a long time especially i i guess part of the reason i i i feel this way i don't know if you feel about this but the turnaround time on death stranding was way faster than i thought it was going to be when they yeah. announced that this partnership was happening i was like well ca- talk to me in five years kojima Maybe you'll have a game by then, but because uh, they partnered with PlayStation, they had the engine from uh, Gorilla, which what was the name of that engine? Might just be uh, Gorilla. I think it is because that's what they used to make. Oh, Decima, the Decima, Decima. engine, because that's called. Horizon Zero Dawn. Yes, uh, which I which, thought which, it played better for Death Stranding than it did Horizon Zero Dawn. But at that point, there were a lot of approve- improvements. So I, I'd have to see how, yeah. it, how it pairs up to uh, Horizon Forbidden West. Right. Yeah. Uh, Horizon Forb- It says here, Horizon Forbidden West will use an updated version of the Decima engine. Um, but but yeah, um, it's it's interesting that, yeah, they basically had this, this really convenient engine ready to go. And Kojima himself went on the record by saying, I really like working with this engine. It was very helpful to make Death Stranding in this engine. Mm-hmm. And obviously making an engine to, to run, to develop your game on cuts down, or it takes up so much game development time. Uh, so I wonder, I mean, obviously working with Xbox, they're not going to get this engine again. Um, how much time it's going to take them to kind of build an engine from the ground up unless they, they borrow something from some other Xbox uh, existing. Yeah, engine. that's true. But I, I'm under the impression that they probably want to build their own engine for later productions. And I'm sure Xbox is fine to foot that bill and let them take their time to do that. Um, but that also probably means we won't see much of this game for a while. Um, yeah. Which I think is understandable. But totally. Also, I want I mean, I, I I don't know if there's anything coming out soon. Like director's cut of Death Stranding is coming out. Uh, mm-hmm. We'll probably do something on that once I play it a little bit or the whole thing. Who knows? Um, <laughs> but I wonder if they've actually been working on anything else. Like it, it's not until I we figure out the extent of what the director's cut m- even means because they just right. announced it like versus the Ghost of Tsushima really director's don't. cut. They like said everything. Um, yeah. We just know there's okay. oranges in a box and he pours yeah. it out. Um, that was such a box. It, you, you gotta imagine like people at Konami saw that and we're like, motherfucker, like we own the IP. <laughs> like we get that. Like you're skirting around like, and oh. it's, to- it's totally legal. It's, it's totally distinct. Like, but it's such a, Hey, yeah, I'm the guy who made metal gear. <laughs> uh, remember, remember all those times you got in a box of snake. Uh, guess what? Oh. Sam Fisher bridges. He doesn't do that. He puts it back on the shelf. <laughs> you just said Sam Fisher Bridges. Which I did. Is you know what? The most you heard incredible it here first, thing. Folks. <laughs> Ubisoft's character Sam Fisher. He won't show up in another video game, but he will show up oh. in Sam Death Stranding. Fisher Bridges. Cut. That is. Oh, that's a Photoshop I got to make now. Um, <laughs> to, to to end this news uh, today, there's a uh, thegamer.com has an article by Josh Colson. Uh, PlayStation fans start a petition to stop Hideo Kojima working with Xbox. Oh my God. <laughs> There's officially a non facetious uh, change.org petition with uh, the article reports 54 people have signed it. Let me just check here. 70, oh, 117, the Halo number people have, 118, sorry, have signed oh. it. Uh, wow, it's just going up now. 120. 
Uh, people are furious. Um, how dare he? Um, he's never made a game for the Xbox before, so how dare he? None of his games have ever been on the Xbox. They've only ever <laughs> been on Sony. They've never even been on PC, so how dare he? Um, yeah. God, people... No, people it's, it's annoying, and obviously, like, this doesn't matter. Uh, it, it... Eh, I mean... Yeah. It's just like, okay, we get it. Listen, X- Xbox is out there making moves. Uh, I think they we said are. this on the local chat yesterday, but I, f- I feel Xbox is making leaps uh, ahead with their moves while PlayStation seems to be cleaning up with their moves. Like, Xbox getting Bethesda is a huge leap forward. PlayStation oh, absolutely. just buying, acquiring Housemark is a, hey, we should have done this years ago. So there's no there's no leap mm. there. It was just PlayStation cleaning up business mess versus mm-hmm. Xbox trying to do and, better. So and I think to the other well, one confirmed acquisition, the other rumored acquisition, but it's happening because somebody in Sony Japan released a you, you saw the blue point thing, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's definitely happening, or at least like they're working on it and they're ready to like fire the the, the tweet out once it actually happens. Which, once the paint dries. That rumor is uh their Metal Gear Solid remaster that people yes. keep pushing around, uh, which doesn't uh, relate to this podcast at all, but that would, be, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I feel about no. that. Um, it'd be interesting. Oh, I'd be, I'd be so for that. Are you kidding me? It depends me? on how like, they do it. Would you just put yeah. Metal Gear Solid in the five engine? Mm. Or would you do it the same? I think they would do it the same. The way Blue Point does remakes, they do. They are extremely faithful, sometimes to a fault. I definitely had huge issues with the uh, Dark Souls re- or sorry, Demon, Demon Souls, Souls remake, because they they went out of their way to make it so faithful, and some of those game mechanics from two thousand nine feel like game mechanics from two thousand nine, and they just pissed me off. As a huge like Dark Souls yeah. fan, I was like, wow, this fucking sucks. Uh, but it was the most it was the, to this day the best looking game I've ever played um, and I couldn't believe it. So uh, I'm excited to see them take that. And, and, and I, it's a thing where like Blue Point, no matter which game they do a remake for, like everyone is like, oh, this is a really good remake or remaster. Uh, yeah, but they've also never done like the facial capture stuff. And obviously, I don't think they would re-record it. They would just use the footage that they they re-recorded for Twin Snakes. Yeah. Uh, Because I'm sure they have all of those audio files in like a high quality like WAV file. But um, yeah, it'd be really interesting to see how they would how they would do that. But yeah, I'm guessing better controls because those controls are a little dated. They are. Um, Yeah, I would honestly love to see them remake metal gear one and two uh in like a similar Mm. metal gear solid engine because those games are are genuinely a good time uh albeit a little bit i was gonna ask have you have you played them yeah yeah, i've played both of them there i remember going back it was like oh i gotta play the this is gonna be so much fun and i was like wow this is somehow even more obtuse yeah the things you have to do are but it's it's also cool because you can see certain things that he did in those games that come back in later games and yeah. at the time, like nobody else had done those things ever since. So, so many fresh eyes were coming to Metal Gear Solid, like one, two and three. And they were like, wow, this is brilliant. You get into you get into this box, you you get in a box in the back of a truck and the truck just drives you somewhere else. Brilliant. Kojima turns out he had done that like 20 years ago in a it, game on crazy. the MSX. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed those games. They were fun. Uh, I've never there's one for the Game Boy that I remember I watched Dan Reichert play it uh, when he was mm. still giant bomb, which was ghost babble, babel, like whatever. Um, your ghost babel. Yeah. Is it about ba- babble? Oh, it it babbles. Babylon. Tower of Babel, uh, right? The tower of Babel. Yeah. So you're it's right. Babel, not Babel. Uh, hey, mm-hmm. Babel. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> that's definitely cool. I, I would love to see that. The, yeah. Those first, I think three was the first game I didn't use a walkthrough for. Like three was at the point mm. where like I kind of could figure things out myself. Not that the other ones were hard, but like if you're not there to spend the time to do it, it, it can be a like I don't I hate figuring out boss fights. Uh, yeah, I do remember going when I when I first played one, the remake of one. I was like, there there is one part where you have to like randomly backtrack 
like an annoying amount and I yeah. had no fucking clue. And then I think one also has the, you have to look at the box art to get the codec number. Yeah. yeah. Which is so good, but like. I think, um, I think it's on the, this is the. It's on the remake. Uh, this one, it's on the box, oh, right? I that's think. good. I'll see if I can, I'll, I'll throw up a picture if I can find it. But yeah, because, I, um. Cause I bought it used and I bought a used copy and it didn't come with uh, a box. So I had to like look it up online, which was such a pain in the ass. I, I hated when games, uh, there's a lot of older games when you try to emulate them, they're like, Hey, type in the CD code. And you're like, Oh yeah. Excuse, excuse me. CD code. Um, yeah, this collection was great. Yeah, I'll, I'll see if the code's on here. I can't actually remember. But um, that stuff and, like, the plug your controller into the other port and uh, yeah, all that memory card reading stuff. Crazy for its time. Oh, my God. Um, so that's the news, folks. Um, that's that's going to be it for this episode one. Uh, thank you again, Zach, for doing this with me. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I still want to figure out some other Kojima thing where we can more like play the games sort of stuff. So I'll still think about mm -hmm. that. I think that'd be fun. Um, but yeah, definitely. Thank you for joining me. Uh, folks, if you want to see more of this content, you can go to subpixelfilms.com. That'll bring you straight to our YouTube channel. If you want to see more of Zach's content, you can go to youtube.com slash save data, just save data, save data team, save data team. They copied mm -hmm. us. Um, Safe data team, or you can find him on Twitter. Uh, I have his little lower third there, so go to him on Twitter. Um, what else? I think that's everything. Uh, so yeah, we'll be doing these semi regularly as long as there's Kojima news. We'll try to record it within 24 hours, 48 hours, and I'll throw it up quick. Uh, these won't mm -hmm. be live; they'll just be quickly. We'll do a discussion. I'll edit it down and chuck them up. So definitely be on the lookout. Um, and yeah, check out the links below for anything. I'll throw some of the Save Data Discord links down there as well. Um, yeah, so thank you, Zach, especially, for joining me for this. And, uh, Always a pleasure. Yeah, we will see you all next time. Bye-bye. Take care.